Welcome everybody to this demonstration of our nanopore sequencing technology. So I'm Matt Parker, I am Director of Clinical Bioinformatics Software at Oxford Nanopore Technologies, and I work in the Epitome team where we make analysis solutions for Oxford Nanopore sequencing data. And today I've got my colleague Tim Walker and we're going to give you a demonstration of our Q-Line gridiron device. Um, so those of you who don't know, nanopore sequencing is unique in that we utilize a protein nanopore. So this is the heart of our platform. It's a protein nanopore sat in a supporting membrane. And we bring the DNA or RNA to that pore, load it through a motor enzyme, and thread it, thread it through the hole in the middle of the pore. What we're doing during this time is passing current through the pore, and that DNA or RNA blocks that current to different amounts. And what that looks like to us is an electrical signal, a trace. We call it a squiggle. This squiggle, we turn into base calls, ATGs or Cs, or modifications. And we're able to read native or amplified uh, DNA or RNA. But because we can read native, it means we get no amplification bias. We read length agnostic, so any, any size read, the, the nanopore doesn't care. You can feed it any size DNA or RNA, and it will sequence it all. So we're here today to talk about our Q-Line gridiron device and how we're producing a unified testing framework for QC. And what we've, what we've been working on is, is simplifying this process because we know um, some existing tests in biomanufacturing can be quite complicated. And some next generation sequencing devices can also be complex. And so we've put together this um, package of three main things. So a, a sample preparation kit that takes you from your analyte to our sequencing device, our grid INQ, and onboard analysis to get you to your answer. And we've been working hard on the grid INQ to produce a platform that's built for applied and regulated use. It's performance that you can rely on. It's to ISO 9001 standards. We have clearly defined product life cycles, and we have enhanced support packages so that you can get the answers that you need quickly. And we're enabling GMP compliance. So the device, um, which is different to our research devices, has controlled login for different um, access um, levels, like lab manager, lab user. Um, and we're also, we also introduced extensive logging so you can, apply, um, you can comply with CFTR part 11. And we've really worked on simplifying the workflow. So the software on the device is, is uh, very different to our research devices. And you can come up and see us later and compare these two. But this is our research use Minnow um, software. It has all of the settings that you would need to run any experiment, whereas our Gridiron software has very locked down assays, which have all the right optimized conditions for each of those experiments. Things like sequencing time, you know, for mRNA, we only need two hours of sequencing. It's not a human genome. We don't need days. Um, so it means that we can go from sample to answer in a single day for mRNA. Um, and I think the best way to um, demonstrate this is to show you the device in action. So I'm going to pass over to my colleague, Tim Walker, who's an applied industrial support specialist, who's going to show you the gridiron device. Tim? Over to you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So I'll start by describing our Biopharma QC test packages. So first off, we have our mRNA QC test pack. This utilizes our latest generation of direct RNA sequencing chemistry that allows you to sequence the full length of your RNA transcripts natively. These test packs bundle the sequencing chemistry kit with the corresponding flow cell that contains a nanopore optimized for sequencing RNA. Here we can take a look at the entire workflow in a little bit more detail. And uh, we can see that after we've prepared and sequenced our sample, the uh, automated analysis pipeline immediately kicks in. This starts with base calling your data. 
Now, because we're sequencing the RNA directly, as Matt said, that we can detect modifications present as well. So the RNA QC test package contains two base callers, one modified, uh, one optimized for canonical bases and one optimized for N1 methyl pseudouridine bases, respectively. So you can get the highest quality data for these modified transcripts. The pipeline will align this data to a reference to generate a consensus and call variance, and then produce an easy to understand report that will list various attributes about your sample, including its identity and integrity. Our plasmid QC test pack uses our latest generation of rapid barcoding chemistry, which can allow you to sequence up to 96 plasmid samples on a single flow cell using minimal additional equipment and time. Looking into this in more detail, we can see that the rapid chemistry really does do what it says on the tin, with a prep time for a single sample being as little as 30 minutes. After the base call-in, the data again is aligned to a reference, and your plasmids are assembled and annotated to produce a QC report on the identity of your plasmid. So to demonstrate how to uh, set up a QC test on the Q-line gridiron, and also to demonstrate how the reports it generates can be used to assess various attributes about mRNA and plasmid samples, we're going to introduce two samples that we sequenced previously, and they'll be the subjects of our demonstration. Firstly, we have our very mysterious sample X. This is an mRNA product. It's about 1,300 bases in length, with a poly A tail of about 30 bases. And we want to check this product for three things. We want to look at its integrity and if it is still intact. We also want to look at the polyadenylation and if the length of the tail is in line with what we're expecting. And we also want to look at the identity of the sequence to see whether there's any mutations present along the transcript. Sample Y is a plasmid precursor. It's approximately 7 kb. We've linearized this plasmid at a cut site, and it contains an insert sequence of interest. For this plasmid, we're going to assess it for three attributes. Is the plasmid the expected size? How well have we linearized this plasmid? And then looking in more detail at the insert sequence, is that sequence correct? So to set up a QC test on the Q-line gridiron, you need to feed several things into the device. You need your sample, which you've prepared and will load onto a flow cell. Reference files that the workflow will use to analyze your sample, and a sample sheet that names your sample and indicates the correct references to use. You also provide an assay configuration file. Matt will detail this more later, but the assay configuration file is what the user will use to set their QC thresholds in which you judge your sample. These are the particular thresholds that we're going to set for the integrity and identity, as well as the poly A tail length of the mRNA and linearization efficiency of our plasmid. So we'll move now onto the gridiron screen, and we'll show you how we begin setting up uh, a run on the gridiron. As Matt mentioned, the interface of the Q-Line gridiron is very different to our research devices. It's a very minimal interface. On the front page here, we have five positions that correspond to the five flow cells you can load onto the device. This allows you to set up up to five experiments independently uh, of each other. So to set up a run, we'll go into the run setup page, and we see the assays that are pre-configured on the device that are available for you to select. One of the attributes of the Q-Line gridiron that allows for CRF 21 Part 11 compliance is that you can have different user access levels, with lab users able to access assays but not make any changes to them, and other levels above able to make more modifications. So I'm going to select on this assay uh, the, Q, the mRNA test and then move to the next page. I've selected my flow cell that I wish to use. 
and then get into the next part. Here, I will import the sample sheet that I'll use. A sample sheet is a very easy, small document to produce. It's a CSV file, basically a text-based table that can be produced on any computer or produced using a spreadsheet editor on the gridiron itself. Importing is quite straightforward. We select our, our file. And then it's then uploaded into the device software and is available then to be used by any other user from within the device software. The next step then is to load our sample onto the flow cell. One other feature of the Qline device is that it provides step-by-step -step instructions on how to load a flow cell here on the screen. So if you have a new user or you've just come back from holiday and you're a little bit rusty, you can remind yourself of what to do here. So if we go to the view of our flow cells right now, I'll show for those that uh, aren't familiar how you load a flow cell. It's, a, it's not a very involved process. It only really involves putting your sample into the port that we see right here. So once that's done, we return then to the gridiron. And then we can begin to start our run. The sequencing run takes approximately two, uh, two hours, and then it will produce your final reports listing the QC status of your sample. We can look at past runs that have performed on the device, and we can see an example of one such report right here. Now, I'll hand back to Matt, who will detail this a bit more and also tell us how our two samples have performed. Thank you, Matt. Um, so I'm going to talk about um, the analysis on board. So like Tim says, once you finish the sequencing, the analysis starts automatically. So I'm from the Epitome team, and, and you might know if you know nanopore sequencing, we produce a range of different workflows for the analysis of nanopore sequencing data. We also produce an application that ena enables anybody to use bioinformatics software in a point-and-click interface. But on the Qline grid, because we didn't want to have to complicate the analysis with uh, another interface. Um, the Epitome software is built into the gridiron in the background, so it runs automatically. The sequencing software can say, hey, Epitome, I need to run the mRNA analysis. It does, it does the analysis and reports back the results. So you can go from sample to answer, to sample to report really, really easily. We produce uh, common formats of reports in HTML and, and PDF. And like Tim said, there, there is some configuration set up for this. So you need a reference file, for example. So we need to know what your mRNA or your plasmid molecule should look like. Then we, you can provide also a regions file. So we understand that you perhaps want to look at specific regions within the mRNA molecule or the plasmid to look for specifically for identity in those regions. Perhaps in one region, you don't mind if you don't have 100% identity or not. So those regions are really easy to provide. It's just a, a position, a start, stop position, and a name. And then we have this assay configuration file, which is what allows us to uh, produce a powerful QC report. So this assay configuration file is in JSON format. So what we, we imagine is that during development, uh, the lab would come up with acceptance criteria for those molecules that you are wanting to sequence and pass this package of files over to QC where they could run, these, um, run the molecules against these and get reports. So the assay configuration file includes acceptance criteria for many, many attributes um, that we'll talk about in a second, and some configuration, things like if you've got an interruption in your poly-A tail in your uh, mRNA molecule. So once you've got those files set up on the device, Choosing a reference, like Tim mentioned, is done via the sample sheet. So the sample sheet tells us what your sample is, as well as which reference to use. So for mRNA, uh, again, the, on, the analysis is on board. It's post-run. Um, and we use both the canonical and N1 methyl pseudouridine models. And these are built into the device. And these are not available commercially. They're, part of the per they're not available to the public. They're part of a, a package um, that we provide as part of the QC test. So the analysis does base calling with, either, with the model that you select. And then we get run performance and alignment statistics, things like the total number of reads. We also provide information on the coverage. So those of you who don't know, the coverage is how many times uh, you have covered each position in your reference sequence with a sequencing read. 
And that's a really nice proxy for integrity. So for an mRNA molecule, if you've put a, a, a 1 KB mRNA molecule into the sequencer, you expect your read to be 1,000 kilobases. That's the power of our technology, right? The molecule you put in, we don't doctor that in any way. You don't have to cut it up. We don't have short reads. You get the full length. So we're expecting for 1,000 bases, all of your reads should be 1,000 bases if your mRNA molecule is intact. And we call that the coverage breadth. And we measure the coverage breadth to tell us about how degraded your mRNA molecule is. So it's a really nice measure of integrity. We also obviously call poly A tail length. So Dorado, our base caller for nanopore sequencing reads, remember I told you we take that signal to bases. This tool is really powerful, also provides an estimation of the poly A tail length for mRNA. And then we look at identity, which is kind of the bread and butter of NGS sequencing. We look for mutations compared to your reference sequence to tell you if something's changed in your mRNA molecule that's unexpected. We also know that uh, mRNA vaccine producers would also like us to have multivalent preparations. So if you've got, for example, flu and COVID in one vaccine, and you'd like to know the proportions and QC information about that mixture, we're going to be bringing that to the workflow this quarter. So for mRNA, like I said, you can set thresholds for all of these attributes. Um, the total number of reads, the mean aligned quality, the percent aligned reads. This is a really nice one because you know, you're expecting your whole prep to align to the reference you've provided. That's all that should be in your, in your tube. If, for example, you have less than 100% aligning, it could be an indication there's some contamination, it's the wrong molecule, someone's made a mix-up somewhere. Um, so that tells you, although it's a very simple statistic, it tells you a lot about your preparation. In this example, we had 99.64% of the reads in this experiment aligning, and we had 42,000 reads covering this molecule. Really, really very high coverage. And that's just in two hours of sequencing. Lots of other things like expected length. We know how long your molecule should be. So yeah, like I mentioned, coverage breadth is really important. So this plot here is the mRNA integrity histogram. This should be shifted all the way to the right. So we're expecting 100% of our molecules to be intact. If it shifts to the left, we know there's something wrong. Also identity, so we provide uh, multiple sequence alignment plots that you'll all be familiar with and how um, how much identity you have, whether that's 100% or lower. And again, you can set QC attributes on these things. So finally, which is a really nice thing about nanopore, is we, we're sequencing direct RNA. So we don't have to copy the molecule. You can put the molecule straight on the sequencer, and we get the poly A tail length. And so we can do a few statistics around that. We produce a histogram. We can give you the mean, median, mode. And you can set a range with which you're happy with. So if you don't want your poly A tail length uh, reads less than 30 to be included in the statistics, you can set those. Um, so all very nice statistics to tell you about the quality of your mRNA molecule. This is an example of one that fails. It's a bimodal distribution. In this case, something happened to the plasmid. We actually sequenced the plasmid as well, and, and the, the tail had um, been degraded. So you can see clearly an example of when this fails. Plasmid's identical. We, we, we run it on the box again, an epitome workflow. We do similar kind of things, apart from for plasmid, because we, we can assemble the plasmid. We have lots of nice long reads. We'll produce a full assembly and check that against your reference. We also look at the linearization efficiency and, again, identity. And we've got more features coming, like host contamination as well. So again, we give you the total reads, the quality of those reads, the amount that align, um, and quality and length distributions. We give you a nice map of the plasmid too. You can search this map, and then we, we annotate with the features of the plasmid as well. In this case, actually, this preparation fails, and Tim will go into the results of our sample X and sample Y in a second. But our linearization efficiency in this plasmid was low. We only got 58.62%. And all of these checks, as I say, can be defined by the user and the workflow producers' reports that show you these um, QC metrics. We also produce all of the outputs you would expect from a bioinformatics workflow and a sequencing device, raw BAM files, also summaries and reports that you can go on and take forward to onward analysis if that's what you'd like to do. So Tim's going to summarize our results. 
and then we'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Matt. So summarizing the, uh, the results that Matt showed us there from both our mRNA and plasmid reports for our two samples, we saw that sample X passed with flying colors. The integrity was at 100%, so above our threshold cutoff of 95 that we set in our configuration file. And likewise also for the identity of the sequence. The poly A tail length, the medium, was above 25 bases, so in line with our expectations. For sample Y, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Our construct size and identity were both 100%, so above our threshold of 95%. However, the linearization efficiency at around 58% was below our QC cutoff. And so this sample failed our QC test. So thank you very much for your attention. Please do come and see us here at the desk if you have any further questions or would like to take a look at our products some more. Thank you.